Hi, my name is Bocadella, and today I'm here to show you how to use the new Google Forms. If you were accustomed to the old Google Forms, you're going to notice a lot of different changes. One of the biggest changes is that the new Google Forms looks a whole lot more like Google Classroom. And also one of the little changes is that the icon for the new Google Forms is now a purple color, unlike its older color green, which often got confused with the other green icon of Google Sheets. Let's go ahead and get into this basics tutorial right up here you'll be able to change the title of your form and you'll notice that it automatically changes it right down here now this section here in the middle is very similar to the stream in Google Classroom and that's where we're going to do most of our work it has two main sections the question section and the responses section we'll go back to questions now if I need to change the title I can change it of course right back up here or I can just click in title I can also add a form description as well here are some of my questions and other items that I can add in this menu right over here. I'm going to go ahead and just click in this question that's already here and you'll see some options that pop up. Now you'll notice that the first question type by default is multiple choice but if you click on it you'll have several different types of questions. I'm going to go ahead and click on short answer which used to just be called text. Now this is your standard short constructed response one of the first things I want to do is ask for a first name. I try to ask both for first name and last name in separate questions so that it appears in two different cells or two different columns in the Google Sheets. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this question type to ask my first name question. Go ahead and change this to first. Now I have both those questions. I'm going to make both of them required. Very few times will I use a Google Form question and not make it required. If I need to delete it, I'll just simply de click on my delete icon right there. You also notice that there are several other options down here in the menu. We'll cover that in a more advanced tutorial. Now I'm going to come up here and add another question. Just by clicking on that plus, I'll call this question number one. I'll make it a required question. I'll go ahead and keep it multiple choice. Just as the name implies, you're going to be able to add several different choices here. You can move those options around just by clicking on those bars and moving those options up and down. You can also delete options and also add another. Let's go ahead and add another question. Let's click on my plus again, call it question number two. This time, I'll go ahead and make it a paragraph. This is like your more long constructed response as mentioned earlier. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll go ahead and click on another question here. We'll call this question number three and we'll make this actually either a checkbox or drop down. Now with a checkbox you're going to be able to choose multiple answers. So I'll go ahead and add a few here. Again you can move those around and delete them however you need to. But do keep in mind with checkboxes again you're going to be able to choose multiple answers as opposed to a drop down menu here which you would of course only be able to choose one answer. I'll go ahead and make that required again. I'll add now my scale question. Go ahead and come down to linear scale. You'll be able to change the extremities of that scale from 1 or 0 all the way up to 10. And then you can label the two extremities of that scale. Now I don't use this question type too much because the data isn't as exact. However, it might be a good question to use if, say for instance, you were asking some type of um, behavioral, behavioral assessment. For example, something like, um, how are you feeling today? Or how does this make you feel on a scale from 0 to 10? Something along those lines. Go ahead and make that a required question. We'll add another question here. It'll be our last type we'll cover in this tutorial, the multiple choice grid. Now this one will allow for a lot more exact measurements. I went ahead and filled in the question to save some time and some of the criteria and you'll see how this kind of multiple choice grid question might be set up with your rows and columns. Now I went ahead and unchecked require one response per row. You can go ahead and check that depending on the question that you need to ask. I'm going to go ahead and scroll back to the top and click on preview just to take a look at this grid question to see what it looked like to the respondent and this is exactly what it would look like now, of course you can click on different answers there let's go ahead and go back to edit mode 
Now I'm going to show you how to add different sections to your Google Form. I'll come down to these double bars on my little menu there. Go ahead and click on that. And you see it added a new section. Think of these as just additional pages. You have additional options for sections. I'll cover that in a more advanced tutorial. Also remember that you can click here and duplicate a section, delete a section. And you can actually, this is a great new feature in the new Google Forms, you can merge with the section above. So if I decide later that I want this to be just one page instead of two, I can just click on Merge with Above and it creates one big page again out of those two sections. You can also add more titles as well. Go ahead and create a section there and add another title. So you can title different portions of your Google Form and you can add pictures. Let me go ahead and add a picture here. You can add a picture by uploading it, taking a snapshot using a webcam, using the URL, your albums, Google Drive, or you can just search for an image. I'm going to go ahead and click on my Google Drive, come down to Pics and Graphics, open up Famous Art here, click on this picture right here. It'll take a couple seconds to load up. I can title the image. I can go ahead and center it. If I want to, I can click on the image and move that around and change the size. I can delete it and I can also duplicate it as well. And of course, if you want to change the image, you just click on your blue change button there. I scroll all the way back up here to my top menu. I'm going to click on my preview button. I'm getting used to clicking on this, so as you're working, you'll see exactly what your Google Form actually looks like instead of just being in the editing mode. Now you see I have my last name, my first name, and all my other questions that I've done. I even have a next button down here since I had two sections. And I'll go ahead and click out of that. Go back to the editing mode here. The next thing I want to talk about is this little palette. When I click on my palette here, it gives me several different color options that I can do. I can also click to upload pictures as well. It has pre-designed templates, so forth and so on. Go ahead and click on one here, click select, and it'll go ahead and change some of the look and feel of the Google Form. The next thing we can cover is our settings icon right here. I'll go ahead and click on that. Here's our settings page, and for more summative applications of Google Forms, you can go ahead and click on Can Submit Only One Response. I usually don't do that because it does require a login as well. What I usually do is I leave that unclicked because I use Google Forms a little bit more for more formative assessments, kind of gauging where my students' learning is at as we go. Now, on my confirmation page, sometimes I actually put a link in this section just so students know exactly where to go after they finish the Google Form. That's one way you could use this confirmation page. Another thing you can do is submit another response. Again, I use Google Forms for a lot of formative assessments, so actually I do keep this clicked. And I also have this clicked as well, so they can go back and edit their responses as well. See some of responses. If you click on this, this probably adds a little bit more of a collaborative uh, communal type of element to Google Forms that gives it more of the feel of the stream in Google Classroom. And next you have presentation options, show progress bar at the bottom of the Google Form. If I have a Google Form with a lot of pages in it, I'll always um, show the progress bar at the bottom of it just so people taking it know exactly where they're at in the Google Form. Now if you are doing more summative assessments, shuffle question order would be a great option to use just to keep the Google Form a little bit more secure. I'll go ahead and click on save. The next thing we're going to cover is our send button. When I have my Google Form done, I've checked it through the preview and it looks great. I'm going to go ahead and click on send. There's several different ways you can publish this form or share it with people. You can send the form just via email. Of course, just typing in the email right there, subject. But what's kind of cool is you can also include the form in the email itself. So they don't have to go to a bunch of different links or websites or whatever. They can answer it right out of their email. And also you can send a copy to yourself. If I click on my hyperlink button right there, my little link button, it gives me the full link. I can actually share that with people. You can text it to people, whatever you need to do. What's kind of cool is they also integrated in um, the Google Forms a shortened URL function, which actually shortens that URL makes it a lot more manageable. 
especially if you are say for example like tweeting it out or whatever and of course you see your social media icons up there and you can share it via those as well now another option that I use actually a whole lot with my Google Forms is I embed the HTML right into my website for some people this may seem kinda scary it really is and all you have to do is click on it highlight it as the directions say Control C, copy, Control V, right into your website, and you have your Google Form embedded right into your class website or any other website as well. Now, one little hint I will give you is 500 pixels is pretty short. Most of my Google Forms are usually somewhere around, I would say, about 1,200 to, I don't know, about 16, 1,700 pixels long, something like that. Some of them a little bit longer, but usually never as small as 500 pixels. So you probably want to up this just a little bit. And in more advanced tutorials, I'll go over that as well. I'll go ahead and click out of this. The last thing we'll cover here in constructing our form is our More menu. I'll go ahead and click on that. You can make a copy of the whole form. And what that gives you is an option of, say, taking a very similar form that you're going to be using um, in the future and just making copies of that and adjusting the questions or videos or titles or whatever you need to. You can get pre-filled links. I might cover that in a more advanced tutorial. Of course you can print it out. You can add more collaborators. So there's just a few more options over here in the more menu that you can check out. The last thing I'm going to show you in this basics tutorial is a Google form that I actually created. It's a very simple one question Google form and the reason I did this is just to show you a few of the new options. For example in my responses when I click on that it gives me this panel and here is an example of the live Google form. So watch what happens when I actually start answering this question. I'll go ahead and start answering it. You'll see that I start getting responses and go ahead and click another response and by the way if you're wondering what the correct answer is it is Mauna Kea. Go ahead and click submit again then you start seeing again your response is broken down in a very simple pie chart as well and that's another great addition to the new Google Forms. I hope this tutorial has helped you out. If you need more help I have my website available at wcadella.weebly.com if you go there I also have more Google Forms training I have more tutorials. You can click on examples and you see right there I have tons of examples available. I do my lesson plans, my quizzes, a lot of the rubrics, so forth and so on in Google Forms as well. So I hope this has helped you out. Have a great day.